As the Ebola virus kills more people in West Africa, the urgency for a vaccine grows. This week, the first step in the long process of developing an Ebola vaccine is getting underway. It's happening at the National Institutes of Health. That's the primary biomedical research facility, facility rather, here in the United States, located just outside Washington. Next month, trials are scheduled to begin in Mali, which borders one of the nations ravaged by the disease. CCTV's Francis Coe got insight from one U.S. scientist trying to develop the vaccine. It's an ordinary looking building in the center of Baltimore, Maryland. But inside the University of Maryland School of Medicine, extraordinary things are taking place in the world of deadly diseases. Scientists here have previously developed effective vaccines against malaria. Now their new mission, creating one for Ebola. On the front lines, Dr. Myron Levine of the school's Center for Vaccine Development. This is a real crisis for uh, this part of the world. Levine is in Mali, which shares a long border with Guinea, where Ebola has killed at least 460 people. Mali is also where Levine and other university researchers will be conducting the first phase of clinical trials for a promising Ebola vaccine as early as October. It's been given to non-human primates, but has not been given to a single human being. The idea is to move that into human beings in two industrialized countries, uh, USA and UK, and then one week later, which is extraordinary, it's absolutely an extraordinarily short time, begin to immunize the first subjects in Mali. If all goes well, Levine and his team will then move to phase two, where more healthy adult volunteers will be given the vaccine with scientists closely monitoring what doses are ideal. If we can get this done, we'll look back and we'll say this was a star. This machine might factor into the Ebola vaccine process. Now, this is what's called a microarray reader. And what it does is it measures antibodies, which are produced by the body's immune system when it detects harmful substances in the body, like the Ebola virus. This is a very, uh, a very uh, lovely, design of the vaccine. It's very sophisticated and has a lot of attractions. And it may be able to stimulate immune responses after administration of just a single dose. That's the hope. With hope comes potential obstacles. Professor Alan Smalljohn was one of the first scientists who identified antibodies able to protect some animals from Ebola. He recognizes developing a vaccine may be easier than changing mindsets in that part of the world. Well, the biggest short-term challenge, as near as I can tell, is um, the logistics of the situation. Just being able to implement all the environmental containment measures that you would want to do without pushback from the population who doesn't understand this disease, doesn't really understand quarantine, suspects that the people trying to help them are really up to no good. The possibility of stopping Ebola's deadly wave is enough motivation to keep these scientists going. The professional satisfaction and the personal satisfaction of having done something that's worthwhile that saves lives. Francis Coe, CCTV, Washington.